so many trials are designed to test non-inferiority or equivalence. I don't really know what this means. Yes, it's as if we are testing something to be as good as or no worse. It doesn't have to be better. Exactly. Let's say there's an established treatment, but your treatment's a lot more attractive to the patient. Like a coronary stent rather than open heart surgery. Or watch and wait rather than chemotherapy for an operable cancer. Or if your treatment's a lot cheaper. Like aspirin at a penny a tablet rather than newer drugs. In all these situations, you might consider a non-inferiority design. Right. But you have to be clear about the size of the difference, which would be clinically worthwhile. Often these trials are underpowered. But it's not obvious that's the case. Okay. So if you're only doing one-sided testing, does that mean the trial will be smaller and cheaper to run? Actually the opposite. With two-sided testing, you don't have to specify which way the result will go. In conventional trials, you can stop when one treatment is better. But in these trials, you have to keep going until your treatment is almost as good. It's like the football pools in the UK. It's much harder to pick the match where both sides score the same number of goals. OK, now explain it to me in terms of the null hypothesis. Yes, that was a good tutorial. OK, remember that the null hypothesis is the simplest view of nature. All differences are zero. Uh-huh. With non-inferiority testing, it's reversed. The hypothesis of no difference becomes the alternative. And you derive a statistic against the idea that established treatment is better. Ah, so the special status of the null state is lost. Exactly. And is there a double negative in the testing? Two wrongs don't make a right. But three rights do make a left. I'm still with you, but only just. OK. Now, explain the implications of all this. Well, when you reverse hypotheses, the sources of alpha and beta errors are reversed. Alpha error refers to the chance of a false positive result. Yes, and beta error refers to a false negative result. So, things which would give a false negative result in a conventional trial give you a false positive result in a non-inferiority trial. Oh no! Oh yes! Non-compliance with treatment? Favours non-inferiority. Loss to follow-up? Favours non-inferiority. Crossover between treatments? Lots of comorbid events. Those too. You mean a poorly conducted trial can easily show non-inferiority? Yes, with a significant p-value. So how do you tell? As always, you have to read the methods section carefully. They don't have methods in the Twitter feed. Twitter is not non-inferior to journals.